Hi, this is John with Worldview Video, and I'm so glad to have you here with us today. We're studying uh, some various topics, doing some topical study on what the Word of God says about some maybe controversial topics. And what we want to do today is we want to look at uh, the difference between religion and Christianity. And uh, there is a big difference. Most people think that Christianity is a religion but that's not very accurate actually uh, a religion the classical definition of a religion is man's search for god and um, we see that there's such a variety of religions that have occurred and man has made some pretty bad mistakes whenever it comes to his search for god and uh, people have done some very wicked things in trying to worship god not understanding god uh, sometimes they think uh, they're polytheistic so the ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans had uh, just a plethora of uh, various gods that they would worship, and they uh, their gods were very much like human beings, and they had you know superpowers, and I think a lot of our uh, various uh, uh, superheroes that we have are actually based upon some of these early gods or some of their attributes, but uh, they had they they weren't like God in that. Uh, our God is holy, and he's righteous, and he's just. But uh, the uh, Greek and Roman gods, they were quite petty, and they would do just terrible things, basically. Uh, they uh, would have sexual relationships that were uh, not in accordance with God's will, and they would uh, sometimes have sexual relationships with mankind. I think that's how Hercules was uh, came about. And... Um, they would, um, you know, fight and uh, make people's lives miserable and gain enjoyment from that. And uh, so we see that the uh, gods of the Greeks and the Romans were not correct. And uh, we see that in a number of other religions, we had uh, some different ideals about God. Of course, India had a polyfe has a polytheistic religion in Hinduism, and they worship a wide variety of different gods. And uh, in this, um, they, um, you know, have gods that are associated with various things. But uh, that is not the belief uh, that God has revealed to us through his word and through his scripture. And uh, God, that's the, the big difference is religion is man's search for God. But uh, true Christian faith is God revealing himself to mankind to redeem mankind and to... Uh, allow mankind to have redemption from sin. Uh, most of the world religions don't really worry too much about sin, but um, it's paramount in the Christian faith. In the Old Testament, they had uh, various things that they would do to try to be in God's favor, and God revealed his law to mankind, to Moses, and uh, the law actually identified sin that we have um, now. And uh, it allows us to see what sin is. And it showed us that man would always uh, fall short in this sin. And then when Jesus came along, he became the Savior, became the ultimate perfect sacrifice. He was sinless. He was 100% man, but also 100% God. And he gave his life uh, in order to um, die as this perfect sacrifice and uh, to take the sins of the world up on him and have the wrath of God brought upon him so that we did not have to face God's wrath because the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. And that's not just talking about physical death, but that's talking about eternal spiritual death, eternal separation from God. Uh, but it says that the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So what we wanted to do is we want to examine uh, why there's a lot of false teachers and a lot of... Um, uh, false beliefs that are out there and of course Satan wants to steal kill and destroy and he will uh, fall uh, provide us with a number of false religions lead people into destructive ways and a lot of these have been very popular and have hung around for hundreds or thousands of years and uh, we're going to see that there is only one way to God Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life and no man comes to the Father except by me we need to believe that. First uh, John four one through six says, "Beloved, um, well, uh, I'm, let's see. 
we may have to go to another page here to read this whole passage. And uh, let's go ahead and do that. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Hereby know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Uh, and this is the spirit of Antichrist, uh, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now it's already in the world. You are of God, little children. He's talking to Christians there. Uh, have overcome the world, because greater is he that is in you than is in the world. Uh, they are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. But we are of God, and we knoweth that God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Uh, hereby know that the, uh, that we, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So um, there is false spirits out there wanting to try to get their message across. And we're not to follow those false spirits, but we're to follow God. Uh, John um, uh, and uh, Matthew seven fifteen says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but are inwardly they are ravening wolves. So when you see some of these false prophets and uh, false teachers, uh, be they of other religions or false Christianity, uh, they're just trying. They're just in in concert or in symphony with Satan himself, trying to destroy uh, mankind and lead them into the three goals of Satan, which are to steal, kill, and destroy. And uh, we don't want that. We want the protection of God upon us. Second Peter two one says. But there were false prophets among uh, the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And God does not tolerate false teachers. And uh, that will lead to their destruction, lead to their damnation. Uh, they will burn in hell if they continue doing that. Uh, Matthew twenty four twenty four says, for there shall arise a false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, uh, they shall deceive the very elect. And of course, that's talking about in the last days, in the time of um, probably the book of Revelation. And prior to that, too, there'll be many false teachers and people saying that they're Jesus Christ and they're not. Romans 16 through 18 says, uh, For they that are such... Uh, serve not only our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches uh, deceives the hearts of the simple. Mark 7, 6 through 9 said, He answered and said to them, uh, Well, Elias, or that's actually, uh, we know him as uh, Eli Elijah, prophesied to you hypocrites, and as it is written, The people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Um, here we see in Deuteronomy 18.20 it says, But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, I have not commanded him to speak, or shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And here we see that's a part of the law of God uh, that Moses was revealing and telling God's judgment is upon these false prophets. And um, for 2 Corinthians 11.13-15 says, for such are false prof, false apostles, defeatful, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Let's read that whole passage. I have to click another button here to read that whole passage. And um, next verse here it says, And no marvel, uh, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore is no great thing if his ministers are also transformed as miniature ministers of righteousness, whose and shall be according to their works. And one thing that happens sometimes is satanic angels come to people and they say that uh, they're an archangel and uh, maybe they'll say that I'm, they're Michael or Gabriel or someone like that and they're uh, wanting to uh, give God's message uh, to these people but uh, God's message has already been revealed. And uh, we see that that was likely what happened. Um, I know this is going to make some people upset. Likely what happened uh, to Muhammad. And we know an angel visited with Muhammad. And, um, uh, you know, he basically 
created this religion of Islam, which is a religion of, of um, a lot of violence and uh, has some uh, behaviors that are very much in direct opposition to what the Bible actually teaches. And, uh, you know, if you look at uh, the Quran, uh, the teachings of Jesus that are in that are not supported by what's in the Bible. And, of course, the Quran does not teach that Jesus is Lord, just teaches that he's a prophet. It doesn't teach that he died for our sins and that he rose from the dead. But, um, uh, you know, that's the truth about Jesus, because Jesus was God come to earth. And uh, so we have here what was likely a satanic angel, or maybe even Satan himself, uh, that came to Muhammad and uh, shared this false religion, uh, or the basis for this false religion. And, um, you know, Muhammad, uh, in my personal opinion, was deceived so that much of the entire world could be deceived. And this deception is still going on. And you don't want to follow a religion that... Uh, has a demonic background to it. Um, and uh, I truly believe that the Muslim religion, they think they're truly following God, but uh, their Allah is not the true God of the Bible. Uh, he's not the true God. And it's a God in which they've been deceived on. And uh, that breaks my heart that uh, they're under this deception. And I believe they are under this deception. And uh, I just... Uh, Pray for them that uh, God will open up his true light to them and that they will come to realize that the God of the Bible is the true revealed God. And, of course, the Bible was written many hundreds of years prior to the time that the Quran was, was written. And Jesus revealed himself to be uh, the absolute Messiah, the one that God sent to save the world. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except by me and we gain our salvation through faith in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone and uh, so uh, I uh, just do not believe that the Muslim the Islamic religion is the truth and uh, I would invite anybody who feels that it is to get a Bible and to read the Bible and let God speak to you through that Bible and uh, if you've never read the Bible uh, then I, I think you should really do that because that is God's revealed truth uh, that's given to mankind. And you can find salvation in the words of the Bible. That's why we teach the Bible. And we don't teach the Quran because we feel that uh, that is actually a deception. And uh, if you've been deceived all this time, uh, I just pray that you will seek out God. Maybe God's drawing you to his truth. And that's the reason you're watching this video right now. Uh, next, we're going to look at Matthew 7, 21. It says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. And if you notice in the uh, Quran, um, you know, the Bible tells us, Thou shalt not kill, and thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not lie. These are the things that uh, we're supposed to do as Christians. But uh, the Quran actually tells you, uh, there may be circumstances or instances where you can do these things and you're in God's will. Well, guess what? That's not what God has revealed. And uh, so that's, that's basically a deception. And uh, we, uh, we're not supposed to do those things that hurt other people. Uh, Jesus, when he sum summarized uh, the Ten Commandments, he said, you're to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And when you do these things, you fulfill the law, and you, you make God happy. And uh, God wants to have a relationship with you, a personal relationship with you. And uh, that's something that you just don't see in Islam. You don't see in the Muslim religion, uh, because uh, it's a deception. Uh, in 2 Timothy 4, 3, it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust." Shall, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And uh, that's been happening uh, throughout uh, all modern times. Of course, this was happening, um, you know, in biblical times, but it's becoming more and more common. And even in Christianity, we see uh, a lot of, quote, Bible teachers 
who claim that they're preaching and teaching the truth, but they're neglecting sin, allowing people to live in sin, and uh, telling them that's all right. And, uh, but, uh, you know, that's, that's false teachers. And God wants uh, us to stay away from those people. But Satan would love for us to follow those people because um, they uh, teach, quote, an easy gospel. And, uh, you know, it's like, well, uh, you know, ask God, he'll forgive you, and you can keep on sinning. That's not what the Bible says. Uh, we're to try to live holy and to use God's power to live within us to lead us into holiness. So there's going to be a lot of false teachers, even in Christianity. And that's one reason it's really, really important that we need to know our Bible, know what it says. And that way we can use the uh, Spirit of God living within us to discern and uh, to uh, somebody that's on YouTube or somebody that's on uh, TV or whatever, they may be a false teacher. And we need to know uh, the truth of the Bible in order that we can identify them. Revelation 20.10 says, And the devil that deceived them uh, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And right after that, it talked about those uh, who followed these deceptions, those that followed against the word of God and did not do what God wanted and whose name was not written into the book of life, guess what? They are cast into this lake of fire as well uh, as far as their eternal judgment. And Jesus is the one that judges us. And uh, we are judged by whether or not Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord of our life. And uh, Jesus died on the cross for our sins so that our sins would not destroy us and lead us into God's wrath being poured upon us. But we don't have to face God's wrath. We can face God's mercy. All we do is in faith, we accept Jesus Christ as Lord, make him Lord of our life, and we live for him and we turn away from sin. And uh, he'll give us salvation and give us a way to God. 1 Corinthians 14.33 says, For God is not the author of confusion, but peace as in all the churches of the saints. So when you see uh, terrorists or uh, other people in other religions doing very confusing, very um, you know damaging things, uh, that's not of God. And uh, God does not uh, want uh, any of us to perish, but he wants us to have eternal life. And he's not the author of confusion, but he wants peace. And he wants to give us uh, the spirit of peace. The Holy Spirit living inside of a Christian has a peace that, what the Bible says, passes understanding, where it's beyond comprehension. No matter what bad times we go through, God can still provide us comfort. And uh, the Holy Spirit can provide that for us. I'm not saying that the Christian life is easy by any means. It can be very hard sometimes because Satan, the enemy, works against us and fights against us. And, uh, but we have protection that comes from God. And um, we're to put on what the Bible says, the whole armor of God, which is a number of things that we can do, having faith and, uh, uh, you know, having the sword of the Spirit or the Word of God. And we have a number of things that can protect us against the wiles of the devil. And, but the devil would love to deceive you. But let me tell you something. The Word of God, the Bible, is the truth. And if you study the Bible, you'll find out who Jesus was, that he was the living Son of God, and he is living today. He conquered sin and death, he rose from the dead, and he lives at the right hand of God right now. And he wants to provide salvation for you because he died on the cross and he paid the price. Well, I thought you, you, know, you said he's dead. You said he died, but he's living. I don't understand. Well, he did die, but uh, God raised him from the dead three days later and he lives forever and he conquered over sin and death and you do not have to face eternal death and, a, and eternal uh, condemnation eternal destruction eternal separation from God but he provides us life eternal to where we can be part of God's family and we can be reconciled to God that loves us and have a personal relationship with him so if you do not know him as your Savior and Lord um, then I just uh, ask that you would turn away from your life of sin, repent of your sin, believe on Jesus Christ, believe that he died on the sins and he took your sins on the cross and that he uh, endured the wrath of God which led to his death 
in order that he could pay the price for your sins. And that blood he bled, being the perfect sacrifice, the only man that has never sinned, uh, that that can be applied to our life. And that uh, God can see us because of what Jesus did for him, for us, uh, because of his righteousness, uh, God will see us as righteous. See us as sinless. He doesn't see your sin anymore. He sees us white as snow because Jesus was righteous. And that righteousness of Jesus is imputed onto us. And we have salvation. Uh, God accepts us fully and we're not separated from him. And you don't want to be separated from God, but you want to be his child and you want to live for him. And many of you are being called right now by the Spirit of God to do just that thing. And I want to pray that you will pray to him. Tell God that uh, you want to turn away from your life of sin. You want to turn toward him. And you need his help to clean you up and make you into a new creation in Christ and to give you a new heart, a brand new heart that's full of love, the love of God, and that you need the Holy Spirit working in your life. And uh, you can get that by having faith in Christ, faith that he can save you from your sins and that he gives you power over sin and death uh, because of what he did for you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this message today. And we pray that many people will watch this and that they will believe on the word of God, believe that Jesus Christ can be the savior of their life and uh, the savior of their souls and that you can bring them eternal life with you forever and uh, Lord we just pray that you'll draw many to you and that they will exercise the faith that you have given them and that they will believe on Christ and they will confess that they'll pray to you and that they will be saved and be born again and brought into your kingdom this we pray in Christ's name amen well thank you for watching worldview today and uh, we want to present you with the truth and we know there's many people out there that are telling you all kinds of crazy things that are not the truth and uh, but we don't want to lie to you we want to give you truth straight from the word of god and that's how we truly learn about how to gain our salvation and how we are to grow in our relationship with god and you can do that and uh, so we want to share the gospel and share the good word of, of god with people all over the world and uh, if you um, like this video uh, you can click the link that's going to be off to the side and we'll have another one of our videos there that you can watch or if you see a picture of me playing a guitar uh, you can click that and that will actually allow you to subscribe to our channel and get notifications about the videos that are coming up and uh, we just ask you to share this on social media so more and more people will not be deceived but they'll know the absolute truth of God that's revealed through his word that can lead them into salvation, that can lead them into a relationship with God, and that is available to each and every person because God desires it. And not only does he desire to have a relationship with you, but he designed uh, you in that way. And he loves you, and he has a plan and a purpose for your life. And uh, are, are you may be surprised to hear that, but he does. You're important to God. The uh, Bible tells us uh, he knows the number of hairs that are on our head. He knew our name before we were born. And he has thoughts about you. He's thinking about you and has positive thoughts for your future. He promised this in his word. And uh, so uh, he wants to develop an intimate relationship with you. And he promised that if you're his child, he will never leave you and never forsake you. And his love for you is immense and overwhelming. And you can experience that by just accepting uh, him, by having faith in his son, Jesus Christ, who died to pay your sin in order that you may be saved and you can be reconciled to God. So until next time, this is John with uh, Worldview Video, uh, praying that you have a blessed day. Bye.